Right guys, we have some new details regarding Apple cancelling plans to release an M2 Extreme chip for the upcoming Mac Pro, so let's delve into it. So yes, many of us were expecting an M2 Extreme chip to debut with the Mac Pro, with of course 48 CPU cores and 152 GPU cores. Essentially, this should have been a dual M2 Ultra chip, but because of the complexity of this and also cost concerns, Apple's cancelled plans to make this. And so that means the only chip we're getting in the Mac Pro now is the regular M2 Ultra that of course should be a successor to the M1 Ultra chip we saw in the Mac Studio. And Gurman ultimately says this is good news because it does free up silicon fab TSMC can use for more popular chips like the M2, the M2 Pro and the M2 Max. And that is a fair point because of course ultimately many consumers are not going to be buying the M2 Extreme Mac Pro so using chip production capacity that of course could be allocated towards higher volume chips might not be the best move. Now in case you're wondering what the specs are going to be for the M2 Ultra, it's going to support up to 24 CPU cores, 76 GPU cores, and up to 192 gigs of unified memory. Now this all sounds very impressive, but do remember this is still going to pale in comparison to the 1.5 terabytes of RAM the 2019 Mac Pro supports, and also 76 GPU cores doesn't sound as impressive as the current Mac Pro that supports for internal graphics cards. And yeah, Apple Silicon definitely has not been as strong in the GPU department. And so I do wonder how this will match the specs of the outgoing Mac Pro. Now German says Apple's answer to this is retaining expandability options for RAM storage and also other components. And that's good news. I'm sure the pros are going to appreciate that. But I do wonder what these other components are because if Apple made dedicated GPUs for the Mac Pro that can add to the machine, that would be nice. So yeah, hopefully we do see some graphics cards. Now, of course, the other question I have in mind is the Mac Studio, because what's going to happen to that if the Mac Pro also gets the Ultra variant? We were expecting the Mac Pro to get the Extreme, so of course it could differentiate itself from the Mac Studio, but that's no longer the case. And yes, we could see upgradability with the Mac Pro, but ultimately the core performance is going to be on par with the Mac Studio, so there's no need to keep both these machines. And actually, German in a previous report did tell us Apple would kill off the Mac Studio as soon as the Mac Pro releases, and I guess it does make sense because the Mac Studio was very much a stopgap device, and so killing it off once the Mac Pro releases that does make sense. But I guess I'm just surprised it's going to have such a short lifespan because it was only released in early 2022. So yeah, there's that guys. A little gutted we're not getting the M2 Extreme chip. However, maybe Apple's going to allow us to configure the Mac Pro with two M2 Ultras that can work in parallel since I believe Apple did allow us to do that with the 2013 Mac Pro. So having that configuration now would be nice, especially for those wanting the best performance. Anyways, let's delve into your comments. So what Marco says, the PCIe slots are used for professional video monitoring, grading slash color correction and network storage. And they should really be including two of these slots if they're not reducing the size of the Mac Pro down to a cube. And while now with this new report, I do think there is a chance we see these slots with the Mac Pro because it seems Apple's going to have a focus on upgradability with this, especially since they can't deliver with the M2 Extreme chip. So at Airsoft Bro says, all I have to say is good luck to Apple, the new Intel chips are beasts. M2 single performance is not even close to the new Intel CPUs. I'm really hoping the Mac Pro comes with 3 nanometers and Apple clocks it higher. So Dan actually, as a reply, makes a very good point. The M2 uses a max of watts, 30 watts, Intel 241, each chip has its uses, but we'll see what the extreme on the 3 nanometers can do hopefully soon. And yeah, that's really the main point. Yes, Intel's chips are performing better, but of course, they're using way more wattage, and so Apple Silicon still can't be beaten when it comes to efficiency. And yes, I know this is a Mac Pro, efficiency does not really matter such, and that's a fair point, and I'm sure that Apple will try and max out the performance on this, even if we don't get the extreme chip. 
But honestly, it's good news Apple's getting some serious competition now because that's gonna push Apple to give us better chips and ultimately we get better products. So regarding the potential launch of a 12 inch MacBook, iReap says hopefully never get an iPad for that. Now that's a somewhat fair statement, I guess, but do remember iPads and Macs serve completely different purposes. And so I think there is a market for a Mac that's well under $1,000 that has the flexibility of Mac OS and can do a lot more for some people. For example, Logic Pro, Final Cut Pro, these are big apps for the Mac. And so of course an iPad can't do that. Also those who code would prefer a Mac. And so yes, I think there is a market for this and it won't eat into iPad market share in my opinion because Again, much like there's a market for the Mac, there's a market for the iPads. For students and artists who need a stylus, the iPad only has that. For those wanting a touchscreen, the iPad again only has that. And you also get more versatility with the form factor of the iPad. So MacBook Pro 16 inch says, they should get rid of the 1299 MacBook Pro and replace it with the 12 inch MacBook. That MacBook makes no sense. They already have the 14 inch and 16 inch MacBook Pro anyways. Yes, I completely agree with this. Even when the 13 inch MacBook Pro was revealed, I said it was a completely useless product. Why would you get this over the cheaper MacBook Air that of course has MagSafe, has a new design, has the better webcam. It's basically better in every aspect. And so yeah, this is completely useless. I'm assuming Apple's either going to replace this with the 15 inch MacBook Air in the works, or of course they kill this off and make way for the 12 inch. But yes, you're right in that we already have a 14 inch and 16 inch MacBook Pro, so having a third size is completely useless. So regarding the leaked benchmarks of the M2 Max chip, at user says, how do we know these benchmarks are legit? Couldn't they just be total BS? And yeah, that is a real possibility since of course, we have two benchmarks now and they have drastically different scores. We just have to take a grain of salt with these benchmarks like we do with any other leak. However, in my opinion, I do have a feeling that one of these benchmarks are actually legit because I'm sure Apple's internally benchmarking these chips. And so for one of these tests to land on Geekbench's database does seem likely. Anyways, tell me your thoughts regarding this report in the comments. Anyways, thank you for watching guys. Make sure to like and subscribe for the latest Apple news and rumors. Check out the video link above on details regarding Apple's VR headsets. And on that note, see ya peeps.